Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Tuesday, January 23rd, 2018. And here are some of today's trends in the news on the market front over there in Asia, up over there in Europe. Yep, everybody's up except CAX down a little bit. And here in the States, it's beep, Dow down, NASDAQ up, oil up, gold up. Hey, even Bitcoin's up. So what's going on? NASDAQ and S&P 500 close at record highs. And Netflix surges. Huh. Netflix. You mean thing that people watch at home and that's why you have attendance now at cinemas going way, way down? Yeah, I wonder if that's a trend. Duh. Yeah, so that's what you got over here. And again... You keep looking at them numbers. As of today, 76% of the S&P 500 companies that had reported surpassed earnings expectations, while 84% of those companies had beaten sales estimates, according to Reuters. So, all three major indexes in the U.S., they're up 6% already this year. And here's a quote. Bridgewater Associates founder Ray Dalio said, there's a lot of cash on the sidelines. We're going to be inundated with cash. If you're holding on to cash, you're going to be feeling pretty stupid. Huh. Huh. You mean that's why pharma groups in $30 billion deals rush? Yeah. AIG's $5.6 billion move for Bermuda Group. Ah, AIG. I never knew what an AIG was until the government stole my money and yours if you are a member of... Slave Landia and work for the plantation in the merger of state and corporate powers when we had to bail out AIG because, hey, the Goldman Sachs gang was going to lose money. Oh, you forgot that, huh? Yeah, under George Bush and Obama kept it going. And now look what they're doing. All this money is only going to the very rich. End of story. And that's what's going to keep driving these markets up. AIG, huh? $5.6 billion. And what else do we have? Ah, Bacardi buys tequila maker for $5.1 billion. Oh, luxury giant buys online seller for $3.29 billion. You get it? This is what the Trump tax breaks have done. This is what quantitative easing has done in Europe, in Japan, in the United States. It's put all this cheap dough, as Dalio says. There's a lot of cash on the sidelines. And again, we were the first magazine to call the Trump rally. Because we said if he does what he says he's going to do, lower taxes, deregulate, and hey, remember that one, build the infrastructure? This market's going to continue, and continue it is. IMF hails broadest upsurge in growth. As leaders gather in Davos, upgrades signal Rosie's global outlook since 2010. All signs point to further strengthening in the global growth, both this year and next. This is very welcome news, said Christine Lagarde, managing director of the IMF. They should get a woman in charge of the IMF. Why do they only... Oh, it is a woman. Oh, I forgot. Ah, and if only a woman was in charge of the International Mafia Federation, then it would be perfect. Again, it's not about gender, not about race, not about creed, not about color. It's about people. 
in the inhuman race. And what else do we have here? Bob Moritz, global chairman of PwC, said chief executive's optimism in the global economy is driven by economic indicators being so strong. And again, these tax cuts are going to add more dough into the economy, as we can see, as all the cash goes into it. But guess what? All you folks in slave land here, it ain't going to go into your pockets. No, no, no. Yep. You remember what I read yesterday about Oxfam? Oh, you forgot? Here it is again. Richest 1% raked in 82% of the wealth created last year. Yeah, the plantation owners and all us plantation workers. Because after all, we got the numbers right here. The wealth of billionaires has grown six times faster than the ordinary worker since 2010. Oxfam said the global economy in which the wealthy few amass even greater fortunes while hundreds of millions of people are struggling to survive on poverty pay. Yeah. Hey, you get a raise, you'd be good. Yeah. yeah. And when you go to these markets, think about what's going on as they keep going up. And as Dalio said, if you're holding on to cash, you're stupid. Remember, at one time we said this was a top-down market. I even said that on Ron Paul, that only a few were playing the market and 10% own 90% of the equities. But it's starting to change. Fearful millennials are finally ready to take a chance on the stock market. So here you got it. This thing is going to keep going up unless something, a wild card event happens, black swan event. But again, the cash is going and you can see what's happening. So now we're going to be really building up this bubble. So get ready. And on to some other news. Gold went up. But gold went up because the dollar went down. And you know I keep saying the same thing. If this economy keeps getting really strong in the United States, interest rates are going to go up. No ifs, ands, or buts. Buts is how high they're going to go, how hard they're going to hit the market, and how hard they're going to hit gold. So if this thing really starts zooming, man, interest rates are going to spike. And gold is going to dive. And oil. Oil went up, man. It's in that 70 range again. Again, you look at the IMF numbers. You look at the growth around the world. The demand is increasing. And there's some slowdowns in Venezuela. But again, we believe the $70 mark, maybe 75 tops, is where we're going. And we still see, you know, another. It's a $20 range as we see it. 70, 75 being the top. 50 being near the bottom. And once production starts gearing up again, more rigs start coming on because oil prices are higher, you're going to see prices go lower. Bitcoin exchange forms in face of pressure. Cryptocurrency platform OKCoin plans to launch a Bitcoin exchange in South Korea as soon as next month, a move that comes as the country's government is considering whether to shut down cryptocurrency exchanges altogether. And then you have another one here. Japan Bitcoin Bourse Group stages Europe expansion. The exchange, which has an 80% share of Bitcoin trading in Japan and 20 to 30% of the global market, launches the services today after gaining a payment institution license from, guess what, Luxembourg. Financial regulator. You can get away with a lot of money deals over there. So you can see where this thing is going. It's going to be a cat and mouse game. And again, if governments crack down on cryptos, game's over. If they let some slack in there, they keep rising. 
And what else do we have here? Ah, Trump imposes tariffs on washes and solar gear. President Donald Trump slaps steep tariffs on imports of solar panels and washing machines, kicking off his second year in office by showing he is ready to start implementing long-promised America First trade policy. And, by the way, you know what I think of Trump when it comes to war and other issues. I'm totally on board with this. I was a young man when NAFTA came to be. The Reagan administration couldn't push it. After that, George Bush couldn't push it. You needed a Democrat. You needed a low-life piece of slimy, slick willy crap and Al the whore gore to push it down America's throat because all the stupid liberal Democrats believe they're murderers and thieves. Just like Obama, folks, how he folked us. Yeah. He, these Democrats know how to lie and the little cowardly liberals believe them. They robbed us of our jobs. So Trump is going to trump on this one. We need good jobs to raise the wages. Yes, things will cost more, but you'll earn more. You got it? Or would you rather buy cheaply and work in Walmart? Or maybe Amazon. Trump says he will push investments in the U.S. at elite gathering in Davos. Quote, I'm going to Davos. We're going to be talking about investing in the United States again for people to come and spend their money in the good, US, good old USA. He said as he was signing measures, putting tariffs on some solar energy components and washing machines. Uh, oh, he was at the elite gathering. The elite gathering. Again, we's just peasants in Slavelandia. Isn't it nice to be an elite person? What elites! Banksters, criminals! A lot of them, not all of them, but not a billionaire. None of these rich cats give a penny for peace. Ah, uh -uh. speaking about peace? Hey, trend alert. Trend alert. What in the world is going on? Yep. More about that interview I had with Ron Paul and what you can do. Hey, and maybe the billionaires and millionaires, you know, to occupy peace and also help promote what Ron Paul is doing with his Peace and Prosperity Institute. But nobody talks about peace. Nope, don't report me now. I don't want the FBI coming in here. And speaking of NAFTA, I heard this guy, Bill Ford, you know, the vice chairman over there of uh, whoever he is in Ford Motor Company. Yeah, they named the Ford guy. Yeah, one of him. And they're talking about putting more restrictions and pulling back from NAFTA. This is his quote. The auto industry was built around NAFTA. You know what that is. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. I watched this little clown shoot those words off on Bloomberg and people believe it. What do you mean the industry is built around NAFTA? You sold us out. Hey, isn't Detroit beautiful now? And all those other surrounding areas that went down with it? No. You got richer, that's all, as we all got poorer. And what else do we have here? How about our friends? Yeah, you know, not, not ours, theirs. You know, Trump's. Yeah, and the military. And all them Congress people. The Saudis, and especially the Crown Prince. Saudi airstrike kills nine civilians. Including a number of children and wounding dozens of others. But that's not any news now, now. There are only Yemenis. Could you imagine 
If nine white folks got killed? Ooh, whoa. Yeah. And children? Oh. By being bombed? Hey. Yeah, but they're our bombs. They're all right. Yeah, they're good bombs. They're American bombs. Because we're the ones that sell them to them. And Turkey defends move against Kurds in Syria. Turkish President Erdogan discounted a request letter on Monday by Secretary of State Tillerson saying in a televised address, quote, Is it over in Iraq? You're still there. You have also entered here, Syria, with the coalition forces. When will your time end in Afghanistan? And that's when Tillerson had wrote to them to restrain their operations going into Syria. When will it end in Afghanistan? Why are we back in Iraq? What are we doing in Syria? How can we be supporting the massacre in Yemen? What about Somalia? I forgot about Libya. Don't forget about peace. Read your trend alert. Put your money and your heart where your mind is. Occupy peace and support the Peace and Prosperity Foundation of Ron Paul. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's some of today's trend.